Richard J. Alexander, you must be the busiest director I know. Barbara Streisand, Norm Lewis, now for 54 Below, you're doing Rosalind Kine and your Melissa, Melissa Errico. Yeah. Oh my God. Kristen Chenoweth for Carnegie Hall on May 3rd. Oh and, uh, my goodness. Not so shabby, right? Not so shabby at all. You no. do great work. Thank you very much. You're always there and you always say beautiful things, and uh, especially when you came to Norm. That was really, really oh, nice. Oh, Norm yeah. was so wonderful. I know. That was a, we worked really, really, really hard, and he really just delivered spectacular. You know, I love what I do. I'm like you. You know, I love it. And so people, I'm not one of these people that people go, what do you do with your free time? I, I don't collect coins or go fishing. Like, I read, I listen to things, I DVR, you know, like, you know, I, I'm a busman's holiday kind of person, but I still love it. I'm not jaded. I don't know, you know. I definitely have opinions, but I'm not jaded. That's great. Now, Norm Lewis is also doing uh, New Jersey Performing Arts Yeah, Center. he's going to do New Jersey Pack, and then, of course, the distinction of you being the first black performer to play the Phantom, Phantom on Broadway. Everybody's been going crazy, like, he's not the first black guy. Yeah, I know. We know that Robert Guillaume did it, but that was in L.A., and the press releases were so specific about on Broadway. On yeah. Broadway. But uh, anyway, you know, I, I gave him his first big role. Um, Broadway, the Miss Saigon up in Canada, and then brought him to Broadway. He was in the chorus at the time of Tommy. But we come full circle. He played Javert for me this summer. Uh, Melissa, I gave her her first job. Roz, I met, of course, working with her sister Barbara. Uh, Kristen, I met, you know, she came up to me one day at the Russian Tea Room going, Would you ever consider working with me? And I said, Yeah. And she goes, I thought you were too busy. And I said, Well, you haven't asked, you know. And so I'm really, I'm, I'm a lucky guy. But the people that I work with who basically are actors who sing or singing actors or singers with great acting ability and velocity, which is one of my favorite things, lungs, uh, no track acts here, um, are, are my favorite thing to do. And, and also the kind of people are so pliable and you get to do so many different kinds of material. And I see everything. You know, like I'm here quite a bit and I'm in all the other places. So I sort of know what I don't want to see and what I, you know, and taste is a very personal thing. But I have to say about all the performers that have uh, worked with me this is that they there's a real element of trust because I ask for a lot you know demanding is the wrong word and you'll always I'll always tell everybody you'll get the show you want but I will give you a great strong argument for why or why not. why you were doing it yeah, yeah, yeah. why a particular song or how to dissect you know particular triumph with Norm was uh, Marvin Gaye's what's going on because we all know it's you know brother brother and the vibe and I said Norm he was a poet you know, picket lines and picket signs, don't punish me. You commit, don't pat your side or no, let the band slam and you do the poetry. And he got that standing ovation and I was like, you know, I could cry. Like that's how turned on I get by what we do. But wow. it takes commitment, it takes commitment. A lot of people just sort through songs and make a lot of noise. I'm not interested in noise, I'm interested in content. And I also don't confuse tempo with content. I don't care how many ballads you sing. It's not like fast, fast, slow. It's not like the shape of a song or A-A-B-A -A -A or A-B-B, you know, whatever it is. It's you have to commit to the material. And that's what really makes, for me, a winning act is commitment and truth. I hate bad dialogue. Like, I hate bad dialogue. You know, this is one of my favorite songs. I hope it's one of yours, too. Taxi! <laughs> Taxi! You know? <laughs> I mean, but you know what I'm saying. No, like, give I me totally some truth. Know. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not into being supportive so much. Like, entertain me. You know, I don't want to go out and support anybody. If it's not good, I'd rather be home in my underwear reading magazines. And that's the God's truth. Well, every show I've ever seen that you've directed has always been entertaining well, and entertaining. And that's right, entertainment. Yeah. And gripping. And turn on a dime. Yeah. I remember Gary Marshall when he used to talk about Laverne and Shirley. He made a very interesting comment that if you, if the people love the person or the persons, you can turn them on a dime from laughter to tears. And I never forgot that for some reason for, you know, the heyday of sitcoms, you know what I mean? And, and, and doing that sort of thing. Um, and I don't know, I, I feel like the same thing. I love being, I learned truth from Bernadette Peters. Honest to God, when I did that Carnegie Hall concert with her way back in 96, I have to say that Bernadette Peters launched my concert career and she taught me truth. Wow. She really did. And I hang my hat on it. I won't do a phony showbiz act. You know, people think Bette Midler's camp. She's not. That's vaudeville. It's ret She's got a delivery. I mean, that is, there's nothing campy about that. I don't do girl and girlfriend and all that shit. Like, I just don't do it. You yeah. Know I, mean? I try to do world class. I think that something's good. It's not like, this is just for New York because it's so cool. Something good should play everywhere. Anywhere, It should yeah. play anywhere. And that's the way you have to think. You know, and I don't like I don't like campy shows. I go to them and everybody's screaming and there's money notes all over the place. And you know, I don't know. I don't relate to it. Maybe I'm too old or old school. I mean, I certainly understand it. Um, not for me. Well, what you do 
You do well, incredibly thank you. well. If I can return the compliment. Oh, and, yeah. thank you. Well, we wish you all the best with the shows here at 54 Great. Below and everything else you're doing, including Thank Kristen you. Chenoweth at Carnegie Hall. What's yeah, that, The May Evolution 3rd? of a Soprano. Yeah, that's going to be yeah. so wow. much show. She I'm was excited. on Letterman the other night. I know. She's, t she's everywhere. I was just in Florida. You know, I have my home in Florida, and she was doing the Rio 2 opening, you know, the animated thing, and, uh, and she's everywhere. You know, I'm like, sometimes I don't even know where she I'm going to turn on the TV. I go, when did you do that? Or she's co-hosting Kelly and Michael. I mean, she is a machine in a good way. Do you yeah. know what I mean? But she's another one she's so sincere and so Christian and you know I know her parents I know I know who she is like I know what she's about so whenever we face music and we all start crying like tonight we have what we call a show and tell with her and me and Mary Mitchell and Kevin Stites and we perform things for each other and pitch material oh. and uh, you know we usually end up in tears all of us because we get so touched you know Aww. well continued success thank you very much thank Thanks. you for everything thank you give you. us thank you all for coming Truly. and seeing this stuff all I'll be here. I'll be here at 54. <laughs> thank you. All right. Darling. Thank you. Thank you. Mwah.